Hello, and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with Immigration Attorney Brian D. Lerner. Uh, in this particular episode, I would like to talk about immigration reform in 2013. Uh, you know, there's, uh, as, as everybody knows, um, there's 11 million people here that are without status, and the immigration reform is somehow meant to try to uh, uh, make it so that um, these people can find some way uh, to legal status, but, but also when they're talking about comprehensive immigration reform, they're, they are not just talking about one side of immigration. They're not just talking about how to give, quote, amnesty to people who are here uh, illegally. Uh, they are also talking about the enforcement side of it. So, so I'd like to give my thoughts on the subject uh, and then also let you know how you can help uh, push the, the matter forward. Now, um, really, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on in regards to immigration reform, um, let's look at a little bit of the history as to uh, what has occurred and why uh, it seems that you know the government, that Congress and so forth, is ready to move forward now on the immigration reform. Well, first of all, we had the uh, in 1996 really was the last time there was a big uh, immigration overhaul. Uh, except in 1996, the immigration overhaul was very anti-immigrant. I mean, practically every provision of the what's referred to as IRA IRA was anti-immigrant, and the uh, fact is is that the uh, immigration attorneys across the United States uh, fought uh, case by case, state by state, uh, appeal by appeal to tear away at the unfair immigration provisions, the unconstitutional provisions, and uh, you know there was obviously a, a lot that were not won, but. Uh, over the years, there has been uh, significant uh, chips away at the uh, unfair immigration provisions. Even in some cases, got all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court and ruled in favor of uh, immigrants and so forth. So, uh, what what brought us to this point here today, when you see that there's a bipartisan uh, report uh, on what should be done? for the immigration overhaul. You see that President Obama gives a press conference on what should be done. Why are we here today, finally, to a point to try to fix the immigration system? Well, during uh, President Obama's first term in office, uh, it, it would appear, if you look back at the first term, that he tried to push uh, some immigration reforms through, but it was just stopped dead in Congress. Okay, There was no uh, movement at all. And in fact, as you're probably aware, uh, the U.S. Congress has an extremely low uh, approval rating. Um, in fact, uh, I'm not sure if it's gone up since the lowest time that I've heard, but it was at 9%. That means that 91% of uh, Americans surveyed thought that Congress was not doing a good job. So in fact, it, you know, the, the last uh, session, of Congress, there was actually very few uh, big bills that went through because essentially, you know, the opposition was essentially saying they're not going to push uh, stuff through. And when President Obama um, was, you know, basically in his first term, uh, it seemed like the goal was to get somebody else uh, elected and then move on to another agenda. But uh, when it it, you know, when essentially President Obama won the second term and is now re-elected, uh, when the American people uh, made it clear that, at least the majority, made it clear that they wanted him back in office, and when the very low approval rating of Congress um, showed that the basically that they were unhappy with a, you know, essentially a stalemate Congress that didn't pa help pass or pass anything. And when the, essentially there has been a, a meeting of the Republicans uh, to show how 
they might be able to get in the you know, more votes and how they might be able to get better on track. Um, all of this has essentially honed into the uh, realization that the vote uh, for you know some immigration bill would be beneficial to both parties. So that's why essentially both parties are now at the table ready to talk, ready to see what they can do for real immigration reform, um, what they might be able to do to help all of these uh, people who are out of status and what they might be able to do also for the enforcement. I mean, obviously, when we're talking uh, comprehensive immigration reform to fix a broken system, um, it has to have essentially two major parts. Okay, the one major part clearly is enforcement. Now, if you look at the statistics, um, during President Obama's first uh, term in office, there was actually more deportations than before, than any time before. So clearly there is enforcement uh, that has been executed uh, by uh, the Obama administration. So, of course, uh, in order to give benefits on one side, and that's the other side, you have the enforcement on one side and you have the, the immigration benefits on the other side. You know, how do people get, uh, you know, work visas and non-immigrant status, how do they get green cards, naturalization, citizenship, all of that. That's on one side and then enforcement is on the other. And enforcement is what happens when uh, there's violations of, of law when crimes are committed, what's happened when people are here illegally, what are the deportation uh, procedures that need to go into effect, and so forth. So, <coughs> so sorry, when, when you're talking about why it's necessary to do comprehensive immigration reform, we look back uh, to 1986, more or less, when pre then President Reagan passed what was called an amnesty, okay? And you know, at that time, there was about three million uh, people here who were here illegally. And of those three million, uh, you know, it, it was a true amnesty that uh, was offered. And so, the the people, a lot of people are thinking, well, if they offer another amnesty, um, what's going to prevent 20 years from now, uh, you know, 30 million people being out of status and, and illegal? Well, that's why you have to not only deal with uh, you know the, the people who are here and you know finding some way to realistically assess the situation to give them some path to uh, residency but and and you know whether we're talking amnesty or not is, is questionable it's it's unclear that you know they're they're talking about just magically you know having 11 million people just fill out some paperwork and boom they get the green card um, there's I'm quite certain there's going to be some path that they have to go through, some requirements that have to be met, uh, you know, in applications, evidence, affidavits, uh, supporting documents, so forth, to either go to the work permit or to legal status. Uh, I'm, you know, normally we're not talking about somebody just filling out a single piece of paper and then three months later they're a U.S. citizen. Okay, that, that's not likely to happen. But what, what needs to be looked at is not only uh, if they're going to be giving, you know, these 11 million people some legal way to, uh, to, to get residency, but how can you prevent or uh, deter um, the illegal entry and the people coming in from all over and, and staying here without going back, you know, and becoming illegal? So there's really subsections that need to be worked on. Again, the enforcement section dealing with the deportation, um, the section dealing with how do you uh, give some kind of status to the you know, 11 million people that are here, but then also, what do you need to do to make it so that people are not enticed to try to come here illegally to work under the table and to uh, try to avoid uh, the system? See, there's some people a lot of people out there that you know basically say, well, they come here illegal, deport them. Okay, just matter of fact like that. And you have to whether you agree or disagree with the fact that these people have come here 
um, and are working I illegally and so forth, you have to look at the reality of the situation, okay? And the reality of the situation is um, most of these people, when they, uh, in the, you know, foreign nationals in their home country, um, they're desperate, uh, they're in poverty, uh, they're, um, you know, being persecuted. Um, there's all kinds of bad stuff that's happening in the foreign country. And they need to support their families. They need to find some way to make a living. And it is the desperation that drives many of them to come to the U.S. In fact, uh, you know, if you followed the path of a lot of people that come to the U.S. through coyotes and through illegal manners, um, you know, and, and the, the incredible uh, hardship journeys that they take and the risks that they take to get here. I, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do that. Obviously, it's not. But it shows you just the reality of the desperation of these people uh, in, in these other countries. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff, supposedly, that, you know, we look at in the U.S. that uh, we believe is not uh, not not the best it could be and so forth but when you compare the United States with other countries where uh, many of these people are coming from you know it, it, it's just um, amazing the conditions that they have to live under so uh, if if you take the reality of the situation that no matter what happens people are going to try to get into the United States to get work and that reality is a given then we, we look at ways to make it so they don't have to go through what they go through to get here and that they can be done legally so there's all kinds of right now as it exists right now there are ways for temporary positions for example you know it's called h2b's and then there's ones for people with college degrees you know called h1b's and there's all kinds of different non-immigrant visas but there's a huge section in between that have really no realistic way of qualifying for a non-immigrant visa. It is that section of people that essentially we're talking about to find some way to get here. Uh, because in essence, what's happening is they get here and then they get, many of uh, these foreign nationals get maltreated by U.S. employers because they end up getting paid a tenth of the wage that a uh, U.S. Uh, a valid U.S. worker would get, um, and and then you know they're afraid to say anything because the moment they say anything, the employer will fire them or they'll get uh, you know afraid they'll get put in deportation proceedings. So really, if there was either another category of non-immigrant visa, work visa, uh, that wasn't as difficult to qualify for and didn't have so many strings attached, and these uh, foreign nationals could come to the United States under this type of uh, work permit and, you know, get the prevailing wage, so they end up getting a, a, a higher wage than they would normally. Of course, the U.S. is going to benefit from that because they end up getting the workers they need. They end up uh, putting more money in the economy, and it's fair for the persons coming in. Uh, there's most likely going to be some kind of derivative benefits that would accrue, uh, you know, to the spouse and our children of these these people. And uh, you know, by making it so it's more realistic to apply for some kind of work visa that they might eas more easily qualify for. Um, that would help everybody involved and it would uh, considerably uh, stem the flow of illegal immigration um, because they know that there would be a valid path to take to get to what they need. There would be less taking advantage of foreign nationals while in the U.S. and it would be uh, better for the economy. So, again, I think what's happening when you look at uh, Congress now, finally, coming together and deciding to do immigration reform, um, they're looking at all of these economic factors. They're looking at the reality of what's happening and what the situation is. They're looking at, you know, ultimately the vote uh, in, of their constituency and what realistically is needed to try to stay in office. Um, and you put all these together and hopefully um, we will get a, a bill an immigration, comprehensive immigration reform that is both fair, uh, that is equitable, and that uh, 
has both sides uh, more or less happy, knowing that both sides are going to have to give uh, and take some things. It'll obviously be a difficult uh, debate, um, but at the end of the day, hopefully we'll have a fair uh, immigration bill that will go forward. So what can you do to, to help? Well, obviously, if, if you don't want immigration reform, then, you know, you can, whether you do or don't, you, you can send your uh, representative in Congress an email. It's very easy these days. Um, just hop on, send the email, let them know what you want, and then go from there. So a, a lot of times, um, you know, they might not realize the extent of what their constituency wants or how uh, how it might affect later on uh, the vote and so forth. So don't sit back and just wait for something to happen. Write your uh, congressman. Um, send notification through email or call of your concerns. They're very receptive to receiving what their constituency is saying. Um, you, you'll note that when you email, pr most of the time, hun almost 100% of the time, you will receive uh, an email back. Uh, they're very good at doing that. And that is one way of doing it. So, And, and you don't have to email just once. You know, email some of your ideas and so forth and tell your friends to email. So we can all essentially keep the pressure on Congress uh, to push forward with the bill so they also have a better idea where you're coming from and what it is you need. Um, now, I, I didn't go into too many uh, other specifics here, but, um, you know, for people who think that there's, you know, that you should just deport uh, any foreign national who's here illegally, um, as it stands right now, there are ways for them to fight to stay here. When someone's been here and they're put in deportation proceedings, um, you know, they can fight a number of ways uh, that the law already exists to keep them here. Cancellation of removal for lawful permanent residents, cancellation of removal for non-permanent residents, asylum, the holding of removal, registry, um, with you know, Convention Against Torture. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of ways, adjustment of status. So, so as of right now, the United States law looks at, uh, you know, what ties the foreign national has already placed in the U.S. and how uh, they might be able to stay here based upon meeting the criteria of these items in deportation slash removal proceedings that already exist. So essentially by creating a way uh, essentially for these people who are here illegally to move forward and obtain residency is not entirely just creating a quote amnesty out of thin air. It is taking a lot of what already exists and making it so that perhaps uh, the more people qualify to be able to go forward in order to be able to obtain residency to make a better life uh, for themselves. But also, uh, you know, many of them are married to, to U.S. citizens, they have U.S. citizen children, they have ties in the U.S., they're already giving uh, a bunch of uh, their efforts and so forth to the United States. So given that, um, I, I appreciate you uh, listening. Uh, to this particular video. If you uh, liked it, please subscribe. Uh, also, uh, welcome your comments, and we'll have more videos coming in the future. Um, thank you.